What's up guys, so today's video is going to be on Mimin, it's my first part of my multi-part Mimin guide. This first part is kind of like the, the basics to it, if you've played Mimin for a while, then you probably need to watch this. But if you're new to the character, um, you never played the character, you just start playing her, or like, I guess you're more of a casual player, not like a real tournament level player, this is a good guide for you, and the other parts going to go a lot more in depth into other interesting things about her. So with that said, let's get into the guide. This character is, in my opinion, a top 10 character. I think most people put her as like top 15, top 20 at worst. Just kind of for the most part seen as a very short character. And my friend described it well. She is a character that starts the game out in advantage state. Because her neutral isn't just good. It is absurdly, overwhelmingly safe, deadly, and oppressive. This character is a character you play. When you don't want your opponent to have fun, you are going to space them out all day. You're going to punish them really hard. You're going to have answers to everything. You're going to make them feel like they cannot move. And everything they do is a mistake if you play it right. But her weakness is if she messes up, she has an atrocious disadvantage state. She gets juggled easily. She can get edge guard very easily. And overall, she's a character you can't make many mistakes with. Now, let's talk about her attributes real quick. Because despite her being a really good character, she has some of the worst attributes in the game. She's heavy, which is nice, like above average weight. I think she's like link weight, which is very good. So if you're a center stage, it's actually hard to set up edge guards on her because a lot of times you hit her off stage. And then because her RP is so far range, she'll make it back pretty easily. But yeah, um, her ground speed is pretty middle of the pack overall. Her air speed is garbage, absolutely atrocious air speed. She's slightly below average fall speed. But she has high gravity, which actually makes her very easy to combo, and is a huge reason she can't really land either, when she's getting juggled properly. So as you see, don't make mistakes with her. Now let's get into her actual game plan. Her game plan is all about keeping people kind of at this like mid-range area, and overwhelming them, and constantly baiting out reactions so you can punish. Right? So, like this is kind of the range around B. I'd say like even from like here, to here is a good range to be lingering at. If you're here, it's a little bit risky, especially if you're like here. This is the danger zone. And it's going to be character dependent to an extent. But that's uh, for the most characters what's going to be. Also, being like here is actually not that good with her versus projectile characters, which I'll talk about later. So, with that said, your goal with her is to constantly, and I mean constantly, abuse like these arms at this range right and your goal with that is to make your opponent react in ways you can predict and punish so like let's say for example and a lot of times people are just be blocking your arms because it's pretty obvious you're gonna swing with them so you have to get used to the uh, the out of show game because that's gonna be like constantly occurring with her so i gotta do this for example and now my opponent has a few options they can roll in which I can beat by just walking back and using my arm with low delay. They can jump, which since I use dragon first, I can't beat, but I can try to walk back and catch the landing or whiffed aerial. They can try and parry, and then if I walk back or jump back, they can't punish me really. They can do show drop, in that case my second arm hits them. So, you see walking back kind of covers everything, and they have to choose whether they want to take space or not, and I have an answer to every option that moves them forward. And if they want to jump back, I can always move with them, or I could just say, alright, you jump back, move forward afterwards, and keep throwing attacks out. And while this is happening, um, Palatine Shield is getting low, right? So, like this, for example, she can't afford to block more attacks. I can show poker easily by angling up, which a good rule of thumb is when you're on the ground. Angling up tends to just be good, so you can potentially get jumps. Almost no reason not to or something. I don't do it all really. I need to start in the habit of angling my attacks up consistently. But almost no reason not to unless the character you're fighting is very short. Or you're using their ram ram. But yeah, this situation stinks now. She can't reach shield anymore. If I like, do a mega fire smash, the shield is going to explode. I can poke it really easily. And now next time the situation occurs, she's forced to move around without the shield. Which makes it a lot easier to hit her. Or she's forced to back off, which lets me corner her. And that is the main thing. And you're going to mostly be using your forward tilt. Because you want to be able to move when doing these attacks. Like forward smash, I see a lot of people do this. And it can work, it can be safe, but it's 
I'm not as good as a forward two because you're more committed to the forward smash. More starter, more end leg. It is more powerful, but a lot of times you can get combos off your tilts anyway. That the smashes aren't even worth it, like lower or mid percents. And that is just a basic thing. Now, like I was here to hit Palutena's shield. She could jump and hit me with a nair. She could parry and dash attack me. She could grab me if I'm too close. She could try to roll behind me. Like she can mix me up and actually hit me instead of using these mix-ups as a way to get close enough to me that her next mix-up can actually hit me. So that is like the main thing. And really it's kind of up to you as a player to figure out like what your opponent's gonna do and get used to handling different situations. So for the most part, 0% I use a lot of Megawatt. And a few good things you should know about like, the strings is if you're using Megawatt, try start with that first in your strings unless you're raining the speed of Dragon. Because if you do Dragon into Megawatt on shield, they can jump out. But if you do Megawatt into Dragon on shield and angle the Dragon up, it tends to catch people jumping out of shield after the Megawatt. So they're forced to guess if you're even going to do the second arm or not. And you go do something like this, not do a second arm, and then you can do this again. And they're just stuck in a really weird spot. And then of course you can just do this, you can delay it a little bit. And mix up these delays is so important along with your movement. Now Ram Ram, I like using Ram Ram at like mid percents. Like I do like at low percents, something like this. Nothing crazy. A lot of her combos are pretty simple. And for the most part you can think of her combos as like a slider. Where it's like the closer you are to a person, the more you can combo off your attacks. As you get farther away, the less you can combo. So like here, I get my biggest combos pretty easily but like i'm obviously less safe there but if i'm like here i won't really get combos maybe setups though which is so nice nothing like too crazy yes yeah, so like using megawatt at like zero to like 30 or 40 for some nice simple combos and then i go to ram ram for most of the stock a lot of times like using dragon first in my strings and it's kind of the same concept with ram ram as megawatt yeah like using dragon first i can kind of lock them in shield like that because if you do this Similar to the other thing, they can jump between these hits pretty easily on block. But this is hard to jump between, especially because the Ram Ram catches jumps. And you can use Ram Ram a lot, because this move is insane. Covers jumps, angling up covers this airspace very well. Now it loses to a lot of attacks. So be careful about using this if someone's like jumping at you with like a lingering hitbox, like a Palo Nair, a Mewtwo new, uh, Nair, maybe like a Shulk forward air. Because Ram Ram gets clanked by a lot of attacks. So does Dragon, actually. Although it's the same exact concept. You get a lot of like, little mid percent combos off the Ram Ram. Except for Dragon easily. You don't get combos off of it. And generally, if you're pretty confident going for the hit, use the Ram Ram first. If you're not as confident, I like using Dragon first. You see like, a lot of like nice stuff like that. And mid percents. And they lift the higher percents. Back to Megawatt's a pretty simple way to do it. Also worth mentioning that there are some matchups where you mostly get to use Ram Ram like versus Zoners who are a bit too far of range for your Megawatt to matter much. Or versus characters that just get in your face a lot <clears throat> and you can't really keep out with Ram Ram anyway. Megawatt's really good. And Megawatt has one very specific property that helps a lot. And that is since it's powerful, it can punch through a lot of weak attacks with just the tilt. And the Smash especially punches through so much stuff. Like beats projectiles cleanly and goes through them. Beats a lot of weak aerials, so like multi hits, lingering hitboxes. And if I miss you, self using Megawatt a lot. When I expect my opponent to jump in me, with those attacks that clank out my other moves, and they just stay out there forever. Yeah, and then that's really like kind of her tilt game, you know, most important, her forward tilt game, the most important move. Um, when you use the smashes and stuff, mostly use those as like guaranteed, like punishes, um, hard reads. Or like combo enders when you have the hit confirm. Or just being a bit more range. Sometimes if you hear you can't hit. But you know like this is safe. So you can go for a smash because the smashes have more range. It's like it, it's situational when you use the smashes. It's kind of the same idea. I was using the tilts as well where it's like you can do all different mix-ups of one, two. You can't move with the smashes of course which is why they're not as good. But still very useful of course. They're not too much lag on them overall. Just more than tilts. Also, Dragon Laser, the even more range. But Dragon Laser is mostly a combo under off like hitting a Dragon Forward Smash. Now, I should also mention with your smashes, when you charge them up each arm, the arm gets bigger and has a special effect. So, all of them have a bigger hitbox. The, the Megawatt does a lot of show damage when charges up. 
The dragon has the buffed up laser. And the Ram Ram just becomes a massive hitbox. It's flaming when it's charged up enough. Actually, I guess not as massive as I thought. Now, the rest of our kit is kind of built around this neutral game and, like, covering different places, right? So, this Nair, for example, phenomenal move. And you're going to use this mostly as, like, an air-to-air -air and air-to-ground spacing tool. It gives you some combos. You go for things like that. And I have to experiment a bit. Mega Ball gives you a lot of combos at low percent, which are brutal. Just a simple one. And then, like, at these mid percents, you can go for dragon or ram ram combos. I tend to look for dragon stuff because dragon is a really safe aerial of space or dragon air. We can do things like this, with, like ram ram. I messed it up, as you see. Yeah, so. Nair gives you a lot of good combos. Very simple. And, like, it's a very good move. It covers a lot of space. It's kind of your air-to-air -air and your anti-air. Like, if someone's above you, it actually hits above pretty well. Hits to the ground. Covers platforms really well. If someone's lands, lands on top of those. Can be used for ledge trapping as well. You do, like, this. And it kind of does everything. Especially Dragon there, because it's the perfect match of range and speed and power, in my opinion. Oh, the knockback. And the knockback angle is good, too. Megawatt is when you want that extra range. Versus, like, say, sorties. Or you want that power because it kills people. It's slower, but it's also really safe from space, right? Make sure it's spaces, though. You know, technically, they're safe from block frame data wise. It's hard to, like, get, like, the perfect timing for landing with it, in my opinion. So, a lot of times, you get punished for, like, point blank nares, even when they should be safe. And then, Ram Ram is more of, like, the hard read, like, jump at someone move because it doesn't have enough range to race space with. So a lot of times I'll do something like this, like just jump with someone with like a hard read. Or like as a punish or something. Even like this, like full hopping and doing like two in a row. Can be really good with the Ram Ram because it's so fast. Yeah, so. This is like the most situational one. Can be used for some combos though. And you're going to find yourself using this move a lot to so get comfortable. Mixing up when you're going to use like this move versus your forward air and tilts. Because you can use both of them in kind of the same places, I'd say. And then your other tilts, up tilts is kind of a okay anti air. Nothing special, gets the job done. I believe the legs are invincible, comes out pretty fast. Can actually kill at higher percents. And there's not much in legs, so like lifting this move isn't that bad. And I prefer to use this as an anti air over up smash because of that. And then down tilt's pretty solid. It's a regular move on the neath move uh, attacks, like people coming in from the air, people using high hitting moves in neutral. It's fast. It also, like, max range. Like, on the tip of the foot, it's pretty hard to punish on block. And up close, you can cross them up a bit, and it's pretty hard, to pun pretty hard to punish on cross up. It also gives you combos at low percents. Low mid percents. Nothing crazy, but, like, this is decent. So try swinging, do that again. The low profile aspect of this move is huge. Go for steps like this, which is really strong. And see, like, air aerial, like, ram ram there gives you lots of setups. Her down smash is whatever, not much luck about it, just, you know, someone holds ledge, maybe, two frame, maybe some characters, can punish, free grabs, down tilt can also two frame, and up smash is mostly my out of shield option if someone spaces poorly on my shield, because on whiff it's really laggy and on block it's pretty laggy, so you know it's pretty fast and hits pretty high up and stuff, it's like as an anti air it's really risky and I don't like using it much unless I'm confident in the hit, it is also a pretty good kill move though. Yeah, this is mostly like, hit my shield poorly, I guess I'll punish you because it's frame 7, which is fast. It's also a projectile reflector, if you time it right, but the projectile reflector doesn't linger too long. So it's very easy to miss this timing if you're like, not really on point with that. Keep that in mind, it's not a key part of a game plan using the reflector on it, but it matters a lot. Speaking of projectiles, by the way, I think I alluded to this before. When fighting projectile characters, you don't want to be like, out here. Because then you whiff your attacks and projectiles are hitting you. So you really want to stay like here, where your arms actually threat the enemy projectiles at this range. And also using your smashes a bit more versus like link arrows is important to punch through the, the projectiles and hit them. Instead of blocking them and jumping over them. Um, other moves. So her up air is not that good. I don't like it. It's like an anti air, you know, right above you. It can kill a higher percent. It's a lending. It has low landing lag, and I have to experiment more with using it to land with. But overall, her upper is not that good of a move. It's mostly like just, hey, you're above me, I guess I'll do this. When like, 
Nair is too slow or like they're a little bit too high up. It also loses to a lot of down arrows or trades with them, so that's not that good. And the downer is a pretty janky landing option. Like if someone's like not expecting you can get away with doing this. I like using this off stage for like this sometimes and then if I'm higher up like say I, I did it from a platform very high up. Like if I do like this. It can be a decent way to get off stage super low and then up B. Which is nice. And you can also use it as a suicide kill option. Like if someone's off stage, I like doing this a lot. Where I catch him with the start of the downer. Because the lingering part does not spike them and just drag them down. So that's pretty good as like a suicide kill option. I found myself using it quite a bit. Well, I can use it more to be honest. And yeah, it's, it's okay. Very punishable blocks. So be careful with it. Someone just gives you space though. It's the fast way to land. And I think that's like all of her normals. I forgot to mention um, her grab. So her grab is pretty integral to her game plan as well. Because you, you're going to use this a lot when you make people overly shield. So you constantly are battering them with your attacks or whatever. And there's okay. But it's the second longest range grab in the game. It has good reward. So you can't fish for it because it's laggy. Slow startup, slow end lag. But it's very rewarding. Lots of range, so... You can kind of use it as a spacing tool, and that's how I use it a lot, is either as like a hard read like this, or as like a spacing tool with a pivot grab. Just watch out because your hands are actually vulnerable here. It's like someone could hit your arms here and hit you. Here they're no longer, so that's fine, but that means you can't use it too up close versus attack. So if someone's like jumping in your face, doing like this when they're in your face isn't going to work. And then the rewarder for grabs is pretty good. Forward throw, once you start to detect it, gives you kind of broken setups. Like you do this, and you're not playing the opponent anymore. You forward throw into dash forward, forward smash into the other arm, whether it's dra um, ram, ram, dragon, whatever. And you get basically cover every tech option. It works on some characters, not all of them. If I figure out which characters they are, which is mostly faster fallen characters, at these mid percents. Um, down throw can set up platform stuff, it's not too useful. Uh, up throw is a kill throw at higher percents. Nothing too crazy, but something that's good to have. Same with back throw, like high percents near the corner. It can be a decent kill option. Her throws scale pretty well with reach, I'd say. But nothing too crazy. And also when you throw people, you get a buffed up dragon arm. For your main arm, which is huge, because this, this is almost as powerful as a megawatt attack. All the dragon attacks now. Uh, absurdly, absurdly strong. Now for edge guarding, you just saw me do it right here. For edge guarding, it's pretty simple. Go off stage and just hit people. There's no special tricks or anything. Legit, just go off stage. You want to try to like catch someone by matching their height and just swing at them. And a lot of times, using your ram ram and dragon is good for this. Also, I know I didn't mention double dragon. I can't think of much use for it. If you want to use like double dragon lasers and neutral, it's okay for that. But otherwise, yeah. But yeah, so like, you really just go off stage and like hitting people like their height. A lot of times, like delaying your arms like one, two is really good. See, so frame trap air dodges. And versus some recoveries, like with the hitbox, like DK from the side, megawatt smash is good. We need to challenge attacks with hitboxes. We need to kill people a little bit early. And you can't like set the edge guard well with like ram ram for some reason. Yeah, also worth mentioning that when you do smashes, you can cancel the end leg of smashes off stage with up B. You can do like something similar to that on stage, but we'll talk about that here. And you can even do like dragon, like forward smash into like laser. If I can use. Uh, maybe like this, I should try to show it. So like this is really good for ledge for edge guarding, like the laser. And you cancel that with the up B and it's extremely powerful edge guarding. So it's pretty simple in that regard. If you see people going high, use the up B as well for that. So they like do this and then boom and catch them. And that's the main use of the up B, by the way, in my opinion, is like matching people's height when they're really high up. You can chase them very easily with this move, whether you tap it for this or charge it. And then yeah, they're a little bit close to a ledge. Nair is really good. Like, runoff Nair of the Gung Low is really strong. 
So keep that in mind as well with Dragon or Ram Ram mostly. Megawatt sends them high up, so it's just gonna kill or like untechable them. I don't like going for Megawatt much. And it, it's a really basic edge guard game plan, I'd say. Also worth mentioning while we're here, her recovery is nuts. Like her airspeed sucks. Garbage airspeed. But her recovery, as I die to show you it, is nuts. Like look how far I can make it back from. If I'm like here, I die anyway. But see how this is on purpose. If I'm like here, I can make it back. So like right above like the blast zone, I'd say, is where her, oh, the bubble is like where her recovery is going to make it on safety. So that's very far. Unless you go really deep with edge guards because of how fast she snaps to the ledge. Like a lot of times, I'll do something like this. Double jump and then I do that. And I make it back from very far and since I'm floatier, I can stay off stage a bit longer. And it really just gives her a lot of like versatility for edge guarding. It means she can go for edge guards and she's pretty safe because then she does that, snaps on stage. Do like a ledge roll afterwards. Go into a ledge trapping. The ledge trapping is pretty basic, honestly. You mostly you know. So you cover regular getup with like Megawatt and Dragon. You cover ledge hold with Dragon or Ram Ram. You cover roll by just pressing buttons. Cover jump with the Ram Ram or Dragon. And you can use smashes as well for this. You want to do like a bit of a higher risk option. Like if they roll as you do a smash and you whiff it, that's bad. Like farther range. So you do like that to cover like ledge hold. This cover ledge jump. You can kill people if you doing regular get up with this. Especially if you charge it, that kills very early. Like obscenely early. And yeah, just kind of kind of try to react to the ledge option pretty easily. The only thing you can't react to is ledge jump. So like you do this and they like ledge jump, you can be like, alright, jump with him and still catch him anyway. And Nair is really good as well for that reason, where it's like like Nair with like Dragon or Megawatt because of the range on them. And then like backing off is really good for ledge trapping. If you got like a slant, you gotta have to rely on down to the hedge catch their ledge jumps and other ledge options. And I'm talking about dash tech at all, I just realized. That moves whatever, it's it's a standard dash tech. Goes pretty far, pretty fast. Stays out for a bit. Pretty unsafe though, unless it's like crossing someone up. So it's not the worst option to get out of the corner, honestly, with as Mimin. Also catches Ledge Jump pretty well, but it's overall not too useful, I'd say. I generally use Down Tilt more than Dash Attack in situations where Dash Attack is applicable. Yeah, so pretty simple Ledge Trapping here, I'd say. Um, anything else worth mentioning? Grab people that do regular get for shield. And then with her two framing, just do that. Nothing too crazy once again. You want to use smashes more than tilts, i say, but sometimes you have to use the tilts. Just smashes have bits bigger hitboxes, and you can charge them so you can release at the right timing and kill people very early. And depending on the the recovery, like if it's an attack recovery that might punch through your ram ram because of flanking properties, Dragon Smash is pretty good for that. If it's like a Sonic recovery though, no hitbox, um, Ram Ram pretty good for that. And they're like right underneath the stage, like kind of against the wall. It's hard to two frame them, but if they're a bit farther out and they actually have come at like diagonal, the two framing is really good. Also, a neutral, um, up B can be used as like a way to like get out of the corner and move around. Especially when someone's uh, respawning, up being to like a platform is really solid. Or if someone's chasing you too aggressively, up being past them and doing like this can be good. But it's a bit gimmicky because they can react to the up B as long as they're not like committing to aggressively chasing you down. Now, Mimin's juggling game isn't that good. Like, I mentioned before she's like up air and up smash and up tilt, but they're all man eh, because she's so slow. So you're mostly gonna be in there and people try to hit them to the side. So I'm trying to like juggle people. I'm really trying to crowd them off stage. Like let's say she's mid stage. My goal is something like this, where I'm like gonna try to hit her, like that. And hit her to the side of the stage, and stab my edge guards and my ledge traps. Because my juggles with like up airs, even the up air like sends them to the side anyway. But like, you really don't like have a good enough up air or anything to like keep juggling them like this. It can work, but not really. Also with Mimin, um, 
platforms are your best friend for making people have trouble purging. So like, stages like PS2, Battlefield, a uh, small battlefield. I think basically every stage that isn't like a slant or a smash fill is really good for her. And the FT is amazing for her though because it's just a long flat stage. And her stages are pretty simple. She likes long stages, flat stages, and stages with the platform she can camp underneath, I say. I know there's one movement player that loves Smashville because he controls the mid platform very well using like Nairs and Megawatt. So I could be wrong about her stage preferences. And finally, for her disadvantage sake, she kind of doesn't have good options there. You hit her in the air, and she kind of just sucks. Like, you don't have special tools. You have like forward smash in the air to stall for a bit. You can like use up to the same extent. But for the most part, like, you just want to kind of like. Air dodge to the platform, land with a nair or forward air, and really trying to find a place to go with your opponent. You don't have any tricks there. Like, you have to watch out with Mimin for your opponents like combo starters and juggle starters, because that's how they beat Mimin. And when you're off stage, if you're off stage and you're close enough to like up to the ledge, you're pretty safe. You can hold ledge if you're afraid of them like two framing you. You can like up be very low if they go off stage and chasing you and like wait for them to recover and then. Up B after they recover, something I do a lot. Also, when you're like, doing like this, you can swing at them and up B, and it's hard for them to really contest that, especially when you have like a dragon available. Doing something like this, when you're off stage, is really hard to contest. Like, it's, it's kind of dummy good. So, if you're in range to do that, you have a lot of mix ups, and it's rare to punch Mimin if you're playing it patiently and waiting for your opponent to do something. And if you're farther out, like here, we have to like jump and drift to the ledge before it can up be. It kind of at the mercy of their opponent. If they can run off and hit you fast enough. Because a good player is going to hit you where you tether from, and not where you're going to tether to. And if they can do that, your best bet is swinging with like a nair or forward air and hoping it hits them. But raise up to your opponent to play right there. Same with the ledge trapping, you don't have any mix ups with the ledge. So you have your normal ledge options. You're very slow in the air, so like ledge jump isn't that good for you because like you don't go far. But still, like the best ledge option in the game. The only special mix we have is like doing a ledge drop into like this. Because this does a lot of shield damage. So if someone's like at the ledge shielding, you can poke them out pretty hard or just hit them for pressing buttons. Like this is really strong. And then suddenly they, what do they do? Hold shield, it gets broken, back off, you get the stage for free. So that's a really good mix up. As you can see, when you can attack with her, just try to attack. <laughs> well, just she's a character with such good buttons that as long as you're in a position to use them, you want to use them because it's so hard for people to contest in like any scenario. And yeah, this is a bit long of a video, but this is, I guess, the basic-ish Mimin guide. And I promise I get more parts out talking about other things like more in-depth stage discussion, combos, uses for arms, all that stuff. Anyway guys, hope this was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments and maybe I can address them in future videos.